Welcome back to Homesteading with the Zimmermans, where we work hard and play hard on our little corner of land in Iowa. My husband and I were born and raised Old Order Mennonite, or Horse and Buggy Mennonite, as some refer to them as. And although we are no longer part of that culture or community, we are intentional about passing on the old-fashioned skills of our childhood to the next generation. Good morning. Today is June 1st, and that also means it is day one of the Three Rivers Challenge, which is a pantry challenge. So real quick history, Jessica and I met on Instagram a couple years ago, and we have met twice in real life since then. And she always does a pantry challenge, a, a th Three Rivers Challenge or a pantry challenge in January and February and I've watched it and it's just not a good time of year for me to do a pantry challenge starting January 1st because we do the holidays up pretty big food wise around here and that means that I'm putting a lot of effort into food all of December and at least the last half of November where I'm buying lots of extra groceries and so by the time January rolls around, I'm really not in the mood to be very creative with my meals. But when Jessica told me that she was having doing a pantry challenge in June, I instantly knew that that would work a whole lot better for us. So what the pantry challenge is, you don't buy any groceries for that amount of time. For this pantry challenge, it's just, just for the month of June. And normally we bulk buy our groceries from azure standard the things that we don't raise here on the homestead but i missed my azure standard cut off this month which means i had to go to one of my very least favorite places that i've ever been to and that is walmart so we went to walmart and aldi's and i'll like we stocked up on some staples that we normally would have gotten from azure standard now Years ago, when I had a house full of little ones and my husband worked full time and I and we really struggled to make ends meet. It was shortly after we left the Mennonite culture um, and we would just really, really struggled to make ends meet and buy groceries each month. And I, I started thinking uh, that we need another stream of income. That's what seemed to be the solution. We need another stream of income so that we can afford to feed the family. And yet everywhere I looked, I didn't have a degree or the skills that were worth more to an employer than minimum wage. And so minimum wage would have barely covered our childcare, let alone the five to $600 a month that we were spending back then on groceries. And as, as time went on, God slowly started showing me that the skills I have and my time is worth more than another stream of income if I use it wisely. So what you see, what you, the meals that you'll see me preparing and the food that you'll see on our shelves and the skills that you'll see us have as we prepare these meals, um, what I want you to know is that this is not just for, this didn't just happen this month or even this year. It has been a slow growing to this point where you'll see that we spend about $300 worth of groceries and that'll get us a long, long ways through the summer. Um, number one, because we have a lot of fresh things getting ready in the garden. Our larder is full of canned food. Our freezer is full of home-raised meat. Um, and we can live a long time without going to the grocery store and buying those specialty items. So what the time and skills and effort that you see us put in, it didn't just happen this month. This has been probably something that we're scaling up over the last five years, like intentionally scaling up over the last five years. And the other thing about June here in the upper Midwest is we don't have as many 
garden things ready as some places. Like the peas might be ready by the end of June, but right now all we've really got is lettuce and radishes and onions that are ready for harvesting. Um, so you'll see us still eat a lot out of the larder and from, you know, not so much from the garden yet. Um, we start eating from the garden in July and August. We eat a lot from the garden. So anyway, today's already Thursday and since I edit my videos on Friday and publish them on Saturday, um, I'm not going to be showing a whole lot of, of individual meals, but I'm going to be sharing my granola recipe, which takes us for miles in the summer. So I'll be sharing my granola recipe and then hop on over to my Instagram if you want to see the day to day. What did we have for breakfast? What did we have for lunch? Um, it, things like that. So on our shopping day, we took the 45 minute drive to a larger city and our first stop was Aldi's. We used to come to Aldi's at least once a month, if not more. And as much as I love some of their products, I was able to save money when I started buying bulk from Azure Standard. And Azure Standard has just as clean of products as the Aldi's brand, but it saved me money by buying them in bulk. And I will put my Azure Standard link in the description for you. We stopped at Aldi first because of their prices and I trust their brand. And then whatever we were not able to find at Aldi's, we will pick up at Walmart. All right, here we go. We're going in. I'm gonna stay focused and only get what I need. We survived Walmart. We are checking out with only the things that we need. Okay, here is just under $300 worth of groceries. And I'm gonna do a quick run through of each thing and what we will use it for. Okay, one of the most expensive things I got and I'm really wishing I would have checked the price before I bought it because I'm pretty sure at my Mennonite bulk food store it's a lot cheaper than $21 for a gallon of vinegar. So um, vinegar is just something that we always try to keep on hand, especially during canning season. And I don't expect to do a whole lot of canning in June, um, but our other gallon is almost gone, so it's good to have another one. And I stocked up on some ketchup because even though I can my homemade ketchup, not every member of the family loves the homemade ketchup, so I still need to keep um, some bought ketchup on hand for them. And then I got some freezer zip blocks because strawberries could be ready soon and peas. And that is what I will freeze fresh vegetables in is the freezer zip blocks. Parchment paper because we're out and I like to use those for baking. I got a couple boxes of saltine crackers because a couple members of the family like those for soup. Um, I got a couple bags of powdered sugar. We don't use a lot of that, but we miss it if we don't have it. And then I ran to TJ Maxx because it's the cheapest place I have found to buy mineral salt. And all of this could have been avoided if I had not missed my Azure standard order cutoff last or earlier this month but I did. And that's normally where I buy my salt, um, except it is cheaper at TJ Maxx. So if I get to the city and I run to TJ Maxx, I always stock up on salt, the mineral salt. And I plan to be fermenting some vegetables. And also when I make cheese, I use a lot of salt because I make a salt brine for my cheese. So I stocked up on salt. I got some plain Greek yogurt at Aldi's because I use this as a yogurt uh, culture starter for all the other yogurts that I make. And this will probably last me a good two months um, where I'll use this as a starter. So one will go a long ways. I got some chickpeas to make our hummus. And then of course, to go with the chickpeas, I got the tahini 
and I got two dozen lemons. Um, this will make, this will go in our hummus and also we'll make hydrating teas and lemonade for us. And then I got the only bag of navy beans that Walmart had. Aldi's didn't have any. Walmart had one bag. I like to use these to make homemade um, baked beans instead of buying tin can baked beans. So I do still have to go to the Mennonite store um, because I will need another 50 pound bag of potatoes to get us through until my potatoes in the garden are ready. So I'm gonna check and see if they have dried navy beans. I got some grape jelly for um, the Baltimore Orioles because this is what we feed them. I got two bags of coconut sugar. This is something else that I buy in bulk um, on Azure Standard, the bulk ordering place. But like I said, I forgot to place my order last month. So I had to get the Walmart coconut sugar and we use this to make our granola, which I will be showing in the video later on. And garlic, because mine in the garden is not quite ready, that will help every meal to taste better and it'll also go in our hummus. And then I got some white wine vinegar. I got some plain olive oil. I got some mustard. And of course, a lot of condiments. A1 sauce, a couple different hot sauces. And I got five mayonnaises. Now in the winter time, I might attempt to make my own mayonnaise, but in the summer, I am really not going to have the time to learn a whole lot of new recipes. So mayonnaise, we use this to make a lot of dressings, salad, our own salad dressings and ranch dip. So I got five of these and this should last us most of the summer. Most of these groceries will last us more than just for the month of June. I don't expect to have to go for groceries again until after the 4th of July. Unless, of course, I need to cook something special for a potluck or but bulk groceries um, with my Azure order next month, I should be good for most of the summer. Unless, of course, we need something special. Um, this was Hadassah's choice of condiment. She wanted some store-bought Thousand Island dressing because she's not too fond of the Thousand Island dressing that I make. And I bought a couple packs of tortillas because sometimes I need real quick meals and I don't have time to make tortillas. But most of the time I hope to make the tortillas that I need, but these will come in handy in a pinch. And then I bought some jasmine rice, which is our favorite rice. Um, normally I buy this from Azure Standard and it's organic and brown jasmine rice, but Walmart didn't have any whole grain jasmine rice. So I bought the white and it's not organic, but it'll do. It'll get us through until my next Azure order. I got some Parmesan cheese because I don't have any Parmesan cheese that's aged long enough to use. I got a whole bunch of paper products to get us through those busy gardening days or when we have friends over or just, you know, we eat around the bonfire. It's nice to have paper products four bags of tortilla chips for those quick taco meals and then this was kind of my extra purchase to make to help make our summer special i got all these ingredients for s'mores and nobody but mom will know where these are and i am gonna micromanage these because they weren't cheap and they will disappear if I don't hide them and just go get them when we want to have s'mores. So there it is. I didn't count some of the toiletries that I bought, um, which are pretty regular purchases. We buy toiletries like big packs, packs of toilet paper and shampoo and conditioner. Um, we buy those two or three times a year. And that is right under okay so i spend a hundred and hundred and forty four dollars at aldi's and a hundred and thirty dollars at walmart and 
I didn't keep my TJ Maxx receipt, but the these were each eight dollars. So I spent sixteen dollars at TJ Maxx on salt. So one more trip to the Mennonite grocery store tomorrow to get our potatoes and check if they have navy beans, and then we're all set. So to keep my lemons fresh this month, I'm going to put them all in Ziploc bags and I will stir them in the refrigerator that way and they will stay fresh for a long time. Today we're on our way to a local Mennonite bulk food store. Um, this store is owned and operated by people that we have known for over 20 years, as long as we live here in this community. And it is one of our very favorite places to get bulk food items. The bag of potatoes that I got today was a 50 pound bag and I paid $16 for it. That's the best price for potatoes that I have found in our area in a long time. Okay. I am going to do a very brief um, pantry tour and it feels glorious here in the cold room. It is over 80 degrees outside already and it's about 55 degrees here in the cold room. So I'm just going to do a real quick inventory of what we've got and this room is about, I think it's about 8 by 8 so I don't have real good um, camera angles. And I also don't have anybody at home today that is willing to do the filming for me. So bear with me. So on this shelf, we have canned chicken, canned beef, canned venison. And then we have chicken broth. And here we have some more canned chicken. And we've got one jar of tallow left. And back here, all these pint jars are jams and jellies, and I've got some cowboy candy or candied jalapenos. And then we've got tomato juice, we've got chili base, um, we've got some applesauce on the top shelf, and we have two, four quarts of grape juice concentrate left. We have a whole bunch of cherry pie filling left, and here's one that's got some mold on, so that one needs to be thrown to the pigs. I'm gonna move that one to the side. And then here we have some pasta sauce, some baked beans, strawberry jam. This is ketchup. And we've got some canned potatoes. And these are um, onions, pickled onions, um, zucchini relish. And these are pineapple zucchinis. So they're zucchinis, canned and pineapple juice um, that you can use as canned pineapples. And I may show that recipe later on in my channel this summer um, because it really is a good way to use up zucchini. Okay, on this little shelf over here, we have some canned carrots left. We have some pickled jalapenos and then there's pepper cabbage, more pepper cabbage, more pepper cabbage. So I don't need to be canning any pepper cabbage this summer. And then we have a whole shelf full of green beans, a whole shelf full of pickles. Down there we have blueberry pie filling and beets and pickled beets. And then over here on this shelf is just some extra supplies. Um, there we've got a bunch of tortilla chips for tacos, some eggs that we're water glassing, and that's a whole bunch more of tomato products. It looks like chili base and pasta sauce. And then we've got some peach pie filling, some more pickles some more green beans and then down there on the bottom is all of our maple syrup that we've canned and here we have a case of graham crackers for s'mores and so in this bucket i have hidden the rest of our s'more supplies and my kids don't watch my channel so it's safe there and I've put that with all of our extra flour and sugar and rolled oats. And there we have a little over 50 pounds of potatoes, which will get us through until the potatoes in the garden are ready. So that's everything here in the cold room. And there's all our extra paper products because in the summertime, when we do a lot of grab and go, 
Um, I often need the older kids to help me outside and it's easier if we don't have a lot of dishes to wash. But believe me, with all the cooking from scratch we do, every member of the family does their fair share of dishwashing in a day. So the only other place that we store bulk groceries is here in this pantry where we have a lot of um, condiments that we use, some extra sugar, some open bags of marshmallows, and then other than what is in our cupboards for baking, like vanilla, baking soda, and our daily use flour and sugar, and what we have in our refrigerator, that's about it. So the only other thing I probably should show is this is our last freezer full of meat. And we have one, two, we have one, two, three, four freezers. And normally three of them are full of meat, but it's time to harvest some of our animals. So that's why we're down to one freezer full of meat. The other one has some extra flour in and some frozen berries and frozen veggies. One of the things that I'm most excited about the pantry challenge for myself is that I think this is going to challenge me to uh, use up some of the cuts of meat that I'm not quite as confident in using. So uh, normally without the pantry challenge, probably we would have gone and bought some bulk meat somewhere just to give us more variety. But because of the pantry challenge, hopefully this will, um, hopefully I will learn to use some of the cuts that I'm not real confident with. So today is June 1st and that means it is day one of the Three Rivers Challenge or the Three Rivers Pantry Challenge. So now the chores are all done, I am going to have a bit of nourishment myself. Thank you, Mitchell. Um, and I have this little bit of milk that didn't fit into a gallon jar. So I'm going to drink some fresh milk and that will likely be my breakfast. So Mitchell was up earlier and had, Mitchell, what did you have? A bowl of granola? Mm -hmm. Mitchell got himself a bowl of granola. And now he's having a glass of chocolate milk before he heads off to work. And I have to go call the little boys in to have their breakfast. So one of the things that you'll notice about our meals, especially our breakfast and our lunch, is that we are much more relaxed than we are during the winter. So in the winter time when our children go to school, we have a very strict routine or a very rigid breakfast routine and supper routine just because we have a pretty strict to get up and go to bed routine um, during the school year too. But in the summer, it's our time to be more relaxed and also to let the older kids experiment a little bit with their skills of when do I need to go to bed so that I can get up and function during the day. So we have people getting up kind of all times of the morning. And this just helps them develop the skill of knowing how much, knowing on their own how much sleep they need. Um, one of the rules that we do have is when you get up, you have to do your chores before you can have breakfast. So if you sleep in or, you know, sleep at, get up after the rest of the family, you still have to go do your chores before you can have breakfast. And this is why our breakfasts are um, not like eggs and potatoes and sausage, is because we kind of have a grab and go breakfast um, for weekday mornings. And then on weekends, when Elvin is home from work for breakfast, then we have our eggs and sausage and potatoes and more, a more filling breakfast. But with the little people, I try to keep an eye on what did they have for breakfast because that helps me understand how soon they're gonna need more nourishment, how soon they're gonna need a snack. If I know he didn't have eggs and bacon and potatoes for breakfast, then I also understand that you're gonna need a snack before lunchtime. Is that right? Yeah. 
So a lot of our meals revolve, are going to revolve around dairy because right now we are getting be around between four and five gallons of milk a day. And today we have one, two, three, we have three and a half gallons of cream to turn into butter. See you, Mitch. Three and a half gallons of cream to turn into butter. And I've got some yogurt here and I'm gonna start clabbering some milk. Um, but the cows, they have all the grass they want to eat. We don't have to buy any feed for the cows right now. So our meals that surround dairy are very economical. They're time consuming because I have to be very on top of my milk, our milk consumption. And I have to, you know, make sure I use it before it gets too old. But they're very economical meals. So if you see us be very heavy on the dairy, just know that we're eating seasonally. And right now we have lots of good nourishing dairy. So that's what our meals are gonna sur surround. It's because that's the most available to us right now for the least amount of cost. So Kendrick chose to have granola for breakfast. And Harrison, what did you have for breakfast, Harrison? Chocolate. You had a pint of chocolate milk? I had chocolate milk and the milk. So the very first ingredient that we use in our granola is seven cups of Rice Krispies. And these Rice Krispies we get by the case from Azure Standard and the only ingredients is organic brown rice. The next thing we add is seven cups of rolled oats. So lest you think that glass of warm milk is the only thing I'm running on today, no. I'm eating some fermented radishes while I make my granola. And I'll probably also have a handful of walnuts and that'll probably get me through until lunch. So the next thing I'm going to add is three cups of walnuts. And normally I chop my walnuts very, very fine, almost into a flour, because my children are not big fans of chunks of walnuts in their granola like I am. And I usually use my Vitamix blender and just blend the walnuts up, but my Vitamix blender is already full of cream to churn cream into butter this morning. So I'm gonna use this little nifty tool and I will link this. I thrifted this one, and but I'll link one just like it. It's kind of like a little food processor. It has knives in there and then you just pull the string and it chops everything up. So there I chopped the walnuts. I'm gonna call that chopped enough for this batch. Okay, so next is your sweetener. You can use brown sugar or sucanat or anything that you want. We use coconut sugar. Um, the reason we use coconut sugar is because it has a low glycemic index, which means it doesn't make your blood sugar spike quite as fast. And since we already have the oats and the Rice Krispies as carbs in this granola, we don't need a bunch of sugar to drive the blood sugars up first thing in the morning. So that is why we go for a low glycemic sweetener. But you can use brown sugar if you want. And this um, coconut sugar we get from Azure Standard. So not counting the sugar, we have 17 cups of dry ingredients in here. So you can make those dry ingredients be anything you want. You can add seeds or different nuts or different, um, you know, you could use cornflakes instead of Rice Krispies. And then you need two to three cups of sugar or sweetener. And if you have something that's really sweet, you'll of course need less. But the basics, the basis of this granola is about 17 cups of dry ingredients of your choice. And I'll put the recipe in the description just the way our family likes it. And then you can adjust it any way you like. So next we gotta add our fat. Oh, I did forget about the one tablespoon of cinnamon that goes into. So 
So now that you have all your dry ingredients, the only other thing that you need is two cups of fat. And because we're so dairy heavy right now in um, our, in the season that we're in, I'm using two cups of butter. But I've in the past used tallow, I've used lard, I have used coconut oil, I've used a mix of those things, and it still turns out just the way we like it. So when I use tallow and lard or coconut oil, I do add about half a teaspoon of salt to the granola, um, but I don't when we use butter because our butter is salted. And then we're just gonna mix it all together. And then I'm gonna put it into these two pans to toast it in the oven. So I actually decided I'm gonna use three pans to toast this today. Since it's such a warm day, I don't wanna run my oven any longer than I have to. So the more you divide it up, the thinner you can spread it, the faster it's going to toast. So now we're gonna put our granola into a 250 degree oven and we are going to set a timer for 15 minutes and we're gonna stir it every 15 minutes for two hours. So this makes a large batch of granola. Feel free to cut your recipe in half if your family is not as large as ours. And if you like a crispier granola, bake it longer. If you like a lighter granola, bake it for a shorter time. And we use this um, as a replacement for box cereal, or we'll put it on top of our yogurt. And one gallon will last us about two weeks. So grilled cheese is a fairly normal lunch for us. And today that is what we're having. We're using our sourdough bread and our Asiago cheese. But because it's a seasonal grilled cheese, what we are adding is spinach and onions that we have sauteed. And spinach and onions are in abundance in the garden right now. So that is how we make a seasonal grilled cheese for lunch. We go to the garden, we see what veggies are ready, and we saute them and add them to our grilled cheese sandwiches. For supper tonight, I am using some baked potatoes that we had left over from the weekend. And I scooped out the middle and mixed it with some sour cream and some seasonings. And we're making a type, my own type of twice baked potatoes. So I topped each potato with some butter and I chopped up some onions from the garden. And we are going to bake these for about 45 minutes. And then I found some frozen chili in the freezer i am going to heat that up and we will serve some chili over these twice baked potatoes well that is it for our very first three rivers challenge three rivers pantry challenge video. Next week I'll be back with some more meal ideas and ways that we cook um, and eat seasonally and I really hope to focus on things that I put into Elvin's lunch each day because that is a big part of the inspiration behind my meals each day is so that I have leftovers for his lunch the next day. Thank you so much to everybody that watches and comments you are a blessing to our family.